Hi friends, here is Corsaira cephalonica, the famous topic. Corsaira cephalonica is the scientific name of rice mill moth or floor moth. To be noted, it is prass and yearly in rice and flour, so it attacks over grain like uh, green like crops and it makes a lot of damages to them. Let's say systematic position about phylum arthropoda. Arthropoda contains jointed appendages. Class is insecta that is tacmata with three pairs of legs. Subclass is terigota that contains wings present. Wild vision is endo wild vision is endo terigota uh, wings are developed internally and holometabolus. The concept holometabolus. It's a condition of metamorphosis in which four stages of the metamorphosis are present, like eggs, larva, pupa, and then adult. So, order of the uh, insect is Lepidoptera. So, it belongs to the category of moths, and the family is Paralidae. Genus is Corsaira, while species species or specific name is cephalonica so correct scientific name is corsaira cephalonica corsaira cephalonica is its scientific name that's a, some general features of the rice male moth or corsaira cephalonica uh, about first one it's a cosmopolitan Cosmopolitan means it is widely spread throughout the air or most of the parts of the world so, uh, it can move from one part of the world to the other where it has not early existed. So, it can spread very apparently. That's why it makes its attacks major on stored brain past. Second major character is a native of the tropics, enjoys a warm climate, but in temperate areas survives in heated stores. Third factor, it mainly attacks rice grains. So, rice grain is its primary attack or primary host, while wheat, millets, groundnuts, sorghum, corn, maize, and other cereals are the secondary hosts. Primarily, it can make its attacks on rice, while as a secondary, it makes attacks on wheat, millets, groundnuts, sorghum, corn, and maize. While it is mostly present in most of the countries, including India, Africa, Australia, Italy, Germany, and France. These are the rich areas, uh, among them most are the heat, hot areas, most of them are hot countries. The climate is hot, that's why this rice mill moth or Corsaira cephalonica can exist there, moreover. Adult rice moth. Here are few characters for adult adult one pale brown color that is usually usually 12 millimeter long with a wingspan of about 15 millimeter. No distinct markings, so it contains no identification over a body specifically. Wings are darkened, so lines are mostly dark in colors. Head appears a projected tuft of scales, so its head contains a lot of scales, and scales are managed like a tuft. It's nocturnal, that's why it appears usually at night and remains dormant at the daytime, so it is short lived. Its life may range two to four days as an adult individual. The hind wings are translucent. So it contains two pairs of uh, wings, usually upper or four, while its lower are hind wings, while its hind wings are translucent. Now, here is general anatomy of this insect as you are visualizing. It contains antenna, proboscis, head, uh, pairs of two pairs of wings, thoracic, abdominal wing, legs, and then ranges. While here it is mentioned as general area uh, that contains front leg, hind leg, abdomen, thorax, head, compound eyes, antenna, hind wings. It should be kept in mind that its abdomen may ranges up to seven to eight 
different fragments which we will visualize later. Uh, life history of Corsaira cephalonica, it is usually holometabolus, holometabolus that contains four stages of metamorphosis. Metamorphosis is a change of the shape form from larva to adult, so it's a conversion of larva into mature adult. So it includes four stages like egg, larva, pupa, adult. The larva is also known as caterpillar. Its larva is called caterpillar, breeding occurs in March to November. So, March to November, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, and November is its breeding months. In these months, it can breed easily. Now, egg laying, the eggs are laid on grains. Usually, it lays its eggs on grains, on containers, or on any surface near grains, either singly or in clusters. So, it can lay egg in two forms as a singly or in cluster form. Next, uh, whitish oval in shape. Its egg color is white, usually oval and uh, round in shape, 0.5 millimeter long, having an incubation period of 4 to 5 days. So these eggs are incubated in 4 to 5 days. Fecundity, that is the total eggs laid by a female in lifetime, is 150 to 200 eggs. Fecundity stands for number of eggs laid by a female mouth in its life span. So, fecundity may contain 150 to 200 eggs. The caterpillar or larva, it is creamy white as seen as shown in the fig for the prominent head. Its head is prominent and dominant. You are visualizing. It moves about actively and feeds on broken grains. Because full grown in 21 to 41 days after 5 moles. So it takes 5 moles to maturity and its maturity may require 21 to 41 days. The full grown larva is pale whitish. You know, as shown in the fig, it's a pale whitish and 15 millimeter long with short scattered hairs and no markings on the body. So full grown larva doesn't contain markings on the body while it contains short scattered hairs and its size may rise up to 15 millimeter in length. Now here is anatomy or general structure again. Three major parts of the body are shown. First head, second thorax, last one and third one is abdomen. Head contains symbolize and medibles that are the jaws while thorax contains thorax legs with three number of spiracles while abdomen abdomen also contains spiracles with abdominal legs in legs in the legs and then at the end of the abdomen are a lot of city the city are usually shown on its belly type materials belly general now next here it's also mentioned in the other sense hat thorax and abdomen and that's why you can mention here it's hat it's a clear distinction among three body parts especially you can count here its abdominal segments uh, they may range from one to nine while it's ten segments that is the inner and contains inners through which is its external may occur. Thus, that's why it may contain abdominal prolax, cordates, inner prolax, pervicle, hind legs, mid legs, and then forelax, which are active in its motility. Now, <coughs> here is fifth character. The larva undergoes five moles and forms six in stars by feeding and growing. So, first of all, let's say what is in star. The individual appearing after act, arising from the act, the individual that arises from the act is called instar. 
that's why it's in star contains six feeding and growing forms or stages and it takes about five moles cutting and chewing type of mouth pods are different feeds on broken grains and spins a web to join grain so it is involved in web formation through silk it creates silk silk produces web and then it mixes contains or to mix a together of a lot of grains hibernates in winter and pupates in spring it can show its hibernation during winter and pupates in spring so here is shown where where the grains over there it is making its attacks now here it is, is its pupal form larva prepares silken cocoons among the grains for pupation first it prepares its cocoon the home where it undergo pupation pupation takes place inside a tough opaque and whitish cocoon 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 is a tough opaque and whitish in color in which it undergoes pupation during pupation there is no feeding no mobility it's a dormant state that involves developmental practice up to the adults while the pupal form lasts for about 10 days may extend up to 40 to 50 days to tide over winters according to winter conditions are the uh, strictness of the winter the required period for pupa ranges from 10 to 40 to 50 it may take 40 to 50 days instead of 10 days while it is passing through pupal form stages during winter season now here are developmental forms of pupa from larva no the larval dorsal side is mentioned here as you are visualizing there is pre pupal dorsal pupal dorsal pupal ventral stage and then pupal dorsal stage here are a lot of anatomical differences which you can make your concepts more clear now the pupa finally changes into adult mouth in about 10 days pupa pupa may convert into 10 days or takes 10 days in the conversion of maturity mating and adling occurs immediately after emergence of adults as usually it uh, takes adult nest so mating and adling uh, happens the entire life cycle takes about 33 to 52 days with six generations passed in one year so it's an important concept that rice mill mouth or floor mouth takes six generations in an year larva mainly cause the damage as these are the voracious feeders active and mobile stages the larva keeps mobile stages more activity and voracious feeders so it can put damage a lot and overall glimpsy at the life cycle act takes 4 to 5 days into larva and then larva takes 21 to 41 days to for the conversion of pupa and then pupa may convert into adult uh, as it and goes 10 to 14 days it should be kept in mind that adult remains alive to 4 days only now here is a life cycle as mentioned upon the right side act that is laid singly on tender leaf tissue no this act may convert into first in star first in star may convert into second second into third no here is four fifth and then the sixth in star caterpillar caterpillar stand for the term larva and then it Uh, appears into pupal form Pu pupa is mentioned here within a cocoon and then it takes its adult form adult mouth as usually it is either it is male or female uh, it produces a fertilized egg that's why it may contain a continuous generation no here is damage caterpillars cause the damage by wrapping together grains and forming lump and feed from inside it 
reduction in marketing quality of the grain. So when it makes a tax for a lot of grains, marketing quality of grains goes down. Heavy infestation causes the entire stock damage into a vapped mass with foul order. So that's why when it makes its infestations into vapped mass, there is a lot of foul order. Grains unfit for human consumption, oil seeds, dry fruits, other cereals are also attacked and infested, causing severe damage. Now here is wrapping together of grains. With grains you can see that uh, rice meal mouth is making a web. And it's in webbed form in both cases you are visualizing. Now here is its attack or infestation. Infestation is a process of how it makes attacks on grains. So, so uh, here is a lot of uh, quality of grains or different variety of grains where it is making its attack. No, uh, here is shown its attack in uh, peanuts, jar, closed foods, and then double bread, even in uh, pets. That's why we can mention it has a lot of ability to infest grains or grains products during rainy seasons. How can we control rice? Male mouth control is mentioned here with three different mechanisms like physical, chemical and biological measures. About physical control, manipulation of the storage environment, making it less favorable for the insects. That's why if we kept in storage environment, environmental uh, if we kept grains in a storage environment then insects are less vulnerable to attack exposure of seeds to sun for three days in summer kill the pests third stores should be clean and well ventilated Lost one, one gut down should be used to store only one kind of grain. That's why one specific kind of grain should be kept under specific conditions. Now here are a lot of uh, different mechanisms about first one that is the alter physical environment can that can save us from its attack and reproduce from its attack like humidity, temperature, air movement, water and light. So these are whole environmental conditions that can protect our grains from its attack. So here is mentioned another use of some devices, machines and other physical method to reduce uh, pest population or to alter the achievement. Now how can we protect our grains? are clean the rice mold from our crops now very simple by head picking spraying with water pruning barriers and diatomaceous earth vacuuming milking tilling and then trapping these are the all methods which can protect our or preserve our foods from its attack now the fifth process is cracks, holes and services in the walls, floors and ceilings of the storehouse should be prevented for not letting the pest in. If pests are allowed to enter in cracks, all the services of the walls, floor and ceiling of the store, then our grain should have to be demolished forever and we have to bear a lot of loss. Chemical control Contact poisons and fumigants are used to kill the pest. Second, pyrethrins of the plant regions are mostly used to low mammalian toxicity and stable to sunlight. Rapid breakdown. If we make uh, unstable to sunlight, uh, rapid breakdown of the floor mouth. That's why we can preserve our Grains. Now, third method is the use of family rate 
and delta methylene that those are the synthetic pyrethroids which are highly toxic to the larva these two different type of chemical can kill larva fully and we make sure preservation of our floor mold uh, preservation of our grains now here is shown the spray method uh, to kill this larva. Now here are some biological methods. This is the safe method to get rid of the insect pests of the store grains. Some of the biological species which are predators of the infecting pests are listed under. One of them is Carosilina docta. It's a predator type and attacks at the larvae of the floor mold. Number two, Amphibolus pinnator, that is the too much predator and strong predator of the larvae. Number three, Enterocephalus mitis, it's a parasite and it parasitizes larvae or pupa. The fourth, Blattisocious kidney, the predator, uh, and it makes predation over eggs or larvae of uh, rice mold. Artina, Arturma alternana, that's the predator of the larvae and kills it forever and makes our crops fully safely. No mechanism of the biological control. Uh, number one, predation to parasitism. Three, uh, competition. Last one is antibiotic. Well, first one, predation. It's a specialized structures for the uh, these are the specialized structures which pre uh, predator have to adopt for predaceous fungi, nematodes, columbulans, mites, and protozoans. Second method is parasitism, that's the parasite parasitization. So, method of parasitization can be applied against fungi and bacteria. The competition for food and space and can be used against fungi and bacteria. Next and last one is antibiotics. This method is very toxic and consisted of toxic compound can be used against fungi and bacteria. Thank you for watching.